Formula One has left the European circuit and now starts the Asia runs. Welcome back to the Singapore Grand Prix. Not many races remain on the calendar then in the Singapore Grand Prix this weekend before we, we head over to Japan in seven days' time. Qatar takes us into October along with a sprint race both there and at the United States Grand Prix in Austin, Texas. October rounds out with the Mexico Grand Prix before we go to Brazil, Las Vegas and then the season rounds out in Abu Dhabi. Can't crown it here, but can do it in Japan. Max Verstappen is on the verge of his third world title. Sergio Perez in second on 219 points. Both of them, however, could wrap up the Constructors' Championship. More on that later. Fernando Alonso is ahead of Lewis Hamilton from Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. George Russell ahead of Lando Norris. And then we get Lance Joel, Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon in 11th. On the second page, Oscar Piastri with 12th. And then it's Alexander Albon ahead of Hulkenberg, Bottas. Joe Granu just re-signed for another year with Alfa Romeo. Then ahead of Sonoda and Magnussen, the last points pairers. Further down, Sergeant Lawson, De Vries and Ricardo still no points. De Vries no longer in the championship. Ricardo out with a broken hand. In the Constructors' Championship, Red Bull lead the way and could wrap up the championship this weekend. More on that later. Mercedes on 273 points, Ferrari 228, the fight is on for second. Then it's Aston Martin ahead of McLaren, who's moved back ahead of Alpine. Williams now 10 clear of Haas, who are a point clear of Alfa Romeo. Alfa Tauri still on three. <laughs> Let's take a look around this Singapore street circuit in Marina Bay. Modified for the third time in its career, this latest version is faster than ever. Get a good exit out of the last corner and boot towards the line. Down towards turn one then, very heavy on the braking zone as well. Braking around about 60 metres, flip the car into the left, a right. Another tight left, it's a sort of a straight line you've got to navigate with some corners. Good exit, which gives you a run down towards the kick and turn four that leads you down Raffles Boulevard and the first of the DRS zones. Open it up and control the exit. Try and keep as close to the wall as you possibly can, but keep a complete straight line to the hard braking zone of turn number six. Flip the car up as well on the curb. Seven and eight now coming up against you as well. Incredibly tightens up the narrowness of it gets really tight. Just come through turn nine. Out now towards turn ten. The old Singapore sling past the hotel as well on the right hand side. Flip the car in as you now approach into the Anderson Bridge. Used to go over the left side, now we go over the right side as you hurtle down the brakes in towards turn number twelve. New section of the track coming up then as well. No longer do we go underneath the famous part where uh, Nelson Piquet crashed in 2008. Now it's a straight line coming out of turn number 14. Hurtle it down, not a DRS zone, but there's where you used to turn off. Now it's a straight run down. Should be very easy to overtake, but it comes up with a very heavy braking zone into the original chicane. Down it now, 18 and 19. It's going to be very interesting to see how this part of the track shapes up. Last two corners, flip the car through, accelerate to the line. It's around 10 seconds faster than the new Marina Bay circuit. Hello everybody and welcome up to the Commerce Box for the first practice session of the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix. To begin with, apologies, we are not live on JB Motorsports 1. Dorna having a block means that we can't live stream the Singapore round this weekend. Thanks Dorna, as per usual. 
But we've got the Twitch channel where we're always simulcasting now as well. And we also have JB Motorsports 2. We'll also be on USRN this weekend as per normal. So it's going to be an interesting weekend to say the least. But we have got a race weekend to do. And I'd like to say hello to everybody who is also watching on JB Motorsports 1 when we premiere this video. Because how it's going to work this weekend is immediately after the session, it's going to be uploaded to YouTube, premiered on the main at JB Motorsports 1. At the end of that, you'll be redirected to Practice 2 here on JB Motorsports 2, and then tomorrow, vice versa, for Practice 3 and qualifying. The race, though, you'll have to remember, it is on JB Motorsports 2 live on YouTube, and it is on Twitch as well. All the new social cards are available uh, at the start of each stream. You can see where all our new stuff is. We're on Instagram now as well. That's going to get kicked up throughout the weekend. Uh, new name on uh, Twitter, because it's now at JB Motorsports X uh, on Instagram at JB Motorsports IG uh, on TikTok at JB Motorsports. So we've pretty much rebranded everything ready to go. Alongside me in the commentary box for this first session is Omi. Uh, about a minute and a half to go, Omi. Welcome back up. Uh, well, this could be a very interesting weekend. Thanks to Donna last weekend. It kind of feels like never wasting our time, but it kind of feels like all our hard work is just a little bit little bit down at the moment so it's gonna be a weird weekend yeah absolutely gonna be a weird one big thanks to donna uh for that really really <laughs> annoying but still we're gonna bring you all of the action uh, everything will be uh on here the second channel uh and also the twitch as well so our excitement isn't gonna stop we're just gonna keep uh broadcasting and uh and we'll be back uh next week uh to normal Absolutely, and speaking of normal, should we get into the swing of it as well? Let's cross over to Simon Lazenby for the details of this weekend. Bring us through the details for this weekend here on Sky Sports F1. Uh, the second practice session is from 1.45. F1 show following that immediately from 3.15. Uh, Saturday qualifying is from 1 o'clock. And with the third practice from 10.15. And on Sunday, 11.30 for your race start at 1 o'clock. And if you prefer, uh, Braden, Scott and Zach will return F1 Kids on the red button for commentary for the race. Let's head up to the commentary box. switched up and had a lizard here a couple of years ago across the circuit in first practice at the start of this commentary I looked down and there's a toad just below my feet in the commentary box walking out towards the door well if Kermit the Frog doesn't like my commentary I can see why Donna blocked us good afternoon everybody if you're here in Marina Bay good morning wherever you are in the world welcome to round 15 of the 2023 FIA Formula One World Championship it's the Marina Bay Street Circuit. For the 15th time in Formula One, we go racing at this great layout as well. 4.940 kilometers as well. And this year, the original night circuit looks a little bit different. No longer have we got that controversial segment where Nelson Piquet crashed in 2008, which was 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Now a straight run opposite Raffles Boulevard down towards the new chicane at 16 and 17. Pirelli have brought the fastest tyre compounds here, the C5 red, the C4 medium and the C3 hard compound tyre. Track should be around about nine seconds faster than last year. The race now at 62 laps as well. And the first practice session under the setting sun here in Marina Bay. Air temperature 32 degrees, 89 Fahrenheit. Track temperature 45 degrees, 113 Fahrenheit. 61% is the humidity as well. And coming into it, the wind blowing in from the southeast. 
Well, it's a beautiful city, both in daylight and under the lights as well. We're all set to go. Fingers crossed it's going to be a very interesting weekend. And hopefully as well, we get a lot of exciting running, Omi, as the track has changed due to the building work. You can still see the original grandstand there no longer in use. But this new layout, faster, should create more overtaking. And in a two-hour Grand Prix that always goes to the distance, I think that's rather good, don't you? Yep, uh, absolutely. So uh, hopefully we are going to get a bit more uh, action as well. Um, um, we're hopefully going to see quite a lot uh, more overtakes as well with this uh, new layout. So going to be really, really uh, interesting to see because uh, if you can't get the move done into turn 14, then maybe you can kind of set it up and then get it done uh, into the 16, 17 chicane. So going to be really, really interesting to see how it improves the racing. So first up then is the hour practice session. As I said, it is slightly irrelevant because the conditions are vastly changing to what we will have for the Grand Prix on Sunday. They're going to head out there as well on the hardest tyre available because you don't want to use your soft sets in these conditions because it just makes no sense. You want to save that run for later on. Across the next hour, we'll be uh, bringing you updates from around the F1 world as well. And I know we are live on Twitch and JB Motorsports 2 this weekend. So welcome along if it's your first time watching. Pleasure to have you here as well. Uh, get sharing that we are here this weekend. The main YouTube channel, JB Motorsports 1, that will be airing the weekend still, but it will be uh, as delayed coverage. So it will be highlights after the fact. But the whole session is going to get uploaded. We're recording it. It'll get uploaded uh, and then premiere, and then you'll automatically be redirected to practice too. So if you're watching this on the main YouTube channel, uh, just uh, as after the fact, just wait until the end. You'll get redirected. Jess says, hey, I am... Um, uh, lurking whilst I'm working. Lucky finish ahead of FP2. Hello, Jess. Nice to have you back. Jess with us this weekend as well. And my thanks to Jess, actually, for providing us with the lap attack guide uh, this weekend. And the nose cam footage very much uh, saved our bacon because we didn't have uh, the ability to do it here. There's Joe Granu. His contract has been extended with Alfa Romeo until the end of the 2024 season. But Alfa Romeo are leaving Formula One. The team will go back to being called Sauber, uh, which was the original uh, as they go there. <laughs> Took loads of attempts, Jess says, as well, to get that lap attack <laughs> right. Green light, though, is on, and the first practice session is underway for the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix. So away we go. It's the most confusing Grand Prix layout because it's the Singapore Airlines Singapore Grand Prix, so it, it likes to go forward. We've had that earlier on this year, actually, with another race being called that. There is Liam Lawson, still debutising for Daniel Ricciardo, who is here this weekend, but uh, still suffering with his broken wrist. He's got a lot of stitches in it as well. Also found out he's a Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo fan recently as well. So there's nothing that Danny Wick can't do. Uh, Sergio Perez, though, only has had some controversy. Not uh, him himself, but Helmut Marco with the racist yeah. comments he made. Um, he's apologised in person, but Sky were talking about it just before we come on air. How much longer can Helmut Marco just keep sprouting this nonsense? and nobody stops him because it's getting a little bit ridiculous now. He never says anything bad about Max. It's always about the second drivers alongside him. And now the comments have turned incredibly racist towards Sergio Perez. Honestly, at this stage, just honestly second, there's no really point uh, of him in the team. Just get rid of him, honestly. Uh, I think I've had enough as well. And if you don't like Perez, just really sack him. Don't just keep uh, saying some uh, bad uh, and rude uh, stuff to him as well and racist. Uh, comments as well because that's not really going to help him as all, uh, at all is it with his confidence at all so that's not helping him so uh, I don't know what else is he trying to do with these uh, messages except just trying to ruin the second driver's confidence uh, as well Helmut Marko of course advisor to Red Bull on the racing side he's officially employed by Red Bull Global which is the, the parent company not the Red Bull Motorsport division so it's very hard for the team to sort of have a go at him. It used to be uh, Dietrich Mateschitz and then Helmut Marko. That was sort of the level at the top. And then since Dietrich Mateschitz passed away, it became 
Helmut Marco, who sort of became untouchable at the team. Ted's in the pits. It's gone down to just 32. Just Ted. 32. Well, easy. Easy life we've got down here. But while, uh, you know, everybody, every one of these mechanics, 60 or so mechanics from 10 teams, are sweating under the, uh, under the uh, incredible humidity and the heat down here, the determination is the same thing to be there at the end of the race, because that is where you might pick up points. And I think you're riding with Fernando Alonso. Uh, they have a little upgrade on the Aston Martin, but Alonso's ambitions this weekend are sky high. So just bear that in mind. While Ferrari might think that they're not going to be as competitive as they were in Monza, Mercedes think they're going to be more competitive than they were at Monza. Fernando Alonso thinks he's headed for maybe even the result that he had, same kind of result he had in Zandvoort a couple of races ago, which of course was second. Oh. So Alonso thinks they've got the pace in that Aston Martin to be there. But this session, so the drivers were saying earlier on this weekend, is all about getting their eye in, getting their confidence in themselves rather than doing any meaningful setup work. Great stuff. Thank you, Ted, for the moment. Uh, very pleased to see Jack Doohan in the commentary box here with us as well. How much, Jack, would you like to be out driving right now? I'd love to be on track right now, but... Um... Can you hear me now? Yes, Sorry I can about hear that. you now. Yes, yep. I would love to be. It's a, a circuit that I've played on video games and done much similar to work around. So, that nah, would be amazing to get around another street circuit. Well, what's it like? What's the challenge like when you've got a session like this that's so early on in the day and then you race in the dark? Yeah, you know, it's so much evolution. There'll be temperatures of track evolution as well as a lot of grip level changes as well. So, as well, this will be like a 10 lap to 12 lap run as well, where we'll be jumping down to, you know, one lap runs later when we're getting on the soft tyre. So, the difference is just massive. Yeah, so from my side, there's always lots of things that you change in the car that maybe people aren't aware of when you go between the P1 and the P2 session. So here you'll be changing things like the brightness of your dash or the visor that you have on. Just explain a little bit of how those interactions happen for a driver. Yeah, it's completely different. Now, obviously, the sun will be coming down, so you'll still be running a dark visor when preferably you wouldn't when you wanted it to. So things are going to change. Your even your references are going to slightly change with the evolution of the track, but also you're visually going to be starting to see things from a different perspective. Jack, just um, coming back to it, obviously you're an Alpine reserve driver, but racing in F2, fourth in the championship at the moment. S seems like it's been a bit of an up and down season. You've had some brilliant weekends where you've racked up a whole lot of points and then um, others which have been less fortunate, <laughs> should we say. So um, where, where do you go from here? Because you've got a, a gap for the final round, I believe, in Abu Dhabi. Yes, and no, then, it's a, a very length, lengthy gap, um, but uh, you know, I'm very privileged to be here with the team and, and for the remainder of the season, so I'll be at every round um, getting to spend more and more time with the team and uh, then, yeah, get to race, obviously, in Abu Dhabi. It's two and a half months away, so it's a <laughs> very lengthy gap, but uh, I'll be getting behind the wheel a little bit in the A521 as well, so at least I won't be fully out of the car. So you've got some FP1s coming up, we believe, as well, isn't it, later this year? Um, yeah, we'll wait and see. Um, I'll let the team do the announcing. Oh, but right, sorry. Was there someone else? <laughs> I just well, no, I mean, in theory, they have to put somebody in, don't they? For, is it two more sessions yes, you've got to do now? Yes, so sessions. You're sitting there ready and waiting to get in the car, so we're going to assume that you'll be in Let's for a couple assume, of days, shall we? Um, <laughs> yeah, if I was tuning in, in Mexico and Abu Dhabi, someone told me. Um, <laughs> Good. But, yeah, that, that would be quite kind of cool. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what I'm here to do. I'm also here ready to, to jump in the car whenever I can. So to do those two sessions would be very cool. So in a normal session like this, when you're not up here with us, we're very glad that you're up here with us. Are you down in the garage listening to the feedback from the drivers and trying to pick up little things to bring back to any simulator that you run into? Yeah, as well with my suit, my hands, my helmet, ready to go. Just ready. <laughs> yes, need Just to ready. jump in <laughs> mid-session. Um, but uh, no, seriously, yes. Um, really trying to see from my perspective behind, you know, sitting in the center console there, trying to see things, looking at other people's uh, live data as well as their live on board, seeing any different lines, different curbs they're able to take, anything that I can even a little bit feedback to their engineers to, to see, to add, to help at all. But uh, yeah, I'm really trying to also further my understanding and experience of a track like Singapore, which potentially could yield me big time in the future. We've seen um, someone from your part of the world, Liam Lawson, jump in as a reserve, get an opportunity um, to, to make his debut. Because, I mean, I, I travelled the world in 2011 as a reserve driver. It was an incredibly frustrating year because you're standing around waiting for an opportunity. Um, you know, but seeing things like that, like Liam, get a chance there, last minute. Two seconds, you know, Joe. Oh, he's how, he's how, how do you, A, how do you think he's got Can on? Because tricky. it's been tricky uh, to jump straight in. And B, you know, does that 
does that play on your mind that okay this could happen to anybody i've got to be ready to jump in at any point yeah i think um you know liam's doing an exceptional job very tricky circumstances in zandvoort uh, being wet in p3 and qualifying and then what even was that race on Sunday? <laughs> um, and then, you know, Monza going to somewhere where he was familiar with. Um, I, you know, I know that he did running in the, in the Red Bull there in 22 as well uh, for media day. So somewhere that was a little bit more familiar for him and he did an exceptional job. So it's great to see someone like him getting a shot and then being able to perform as well. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's something that I'm here, I'm ready. Even for the likes of Singapore being a reserve, I was doing still, um, you know, heat acclimation, trying to be ready just in case uh, that that would help in. So I'd be completely ready myself. There's a new section then down towards 15 and 16, the back of the track that we've just been watching, Omi, as well. Drivers getting in 137.895. Uh, it is around about nine to 10 seconds faster this track already. As Albon's going to go, I think P1 coming across the line. He's certainly looking faster. Oh, only jumps to 11, 139.1. One five got held up with a lot of traffic, but finally Singapore feels like it's got a bit more of a swing to it as well, doesn't it? It feels like it's a bit more flowing, a bit more easier to drive. I like the look of this track a lot more now. Yep, uh, absolutely, really, really does uh, look great, and also in the night uh, it's gonna look even more great. But uh, we've got to be careful not to call the Williams the McLaren this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling that this weekend I might just call the Williams a McLaren at some point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to be one thing uh, to keep an eye on as Norris uh, improves his uh, time as well. But, yeah, going to be a really, really great uh, weekend here at Singapore as well. As we start with Max. Okay, uh, quite aggressive downshift. And I struggle a bit mid to exit all the time. A lot of them will steer in every basically. That's Max Verstappen just complaining over the radio about how the setup of the car is not just quite right yet. It is the first session in the first nine minutes as well. So they're going to have to take a little bit of time to get used to it. A little bit of edge to it. Leclerc goes third, 136, 3, 6, 8 on the hard tyre. Sargent up to 14th for the Williams in the Gulf livery this weekend. And this is Sergio Perez at a track he dominated last year with a brilliant race victory, it must be said. Uh, dominated the weekend after Max had a penalty in qualifying that dropped him down to eighth place. It is a track that Max Verstappen struggles at, Omi, this one. So is it a weekend where we could see Perez fight back? I know the title's pretty much done, but for, for Perez's own mental health, could he get a race win? Or is the likes of Alonso, the, the Ferraris, even the McLaren, have they got a shot at taking a race win this weekend? I think definitely this uh, weekend would be a bit of an opportunity uh, for uh, all of the teams. Not the easiest circuit to overtake, even with uh, the extra straight added. It's still a very, very challenging circuit uh, to overtake at. So if you are able to put it on pole um, in qualifying, then that could really, really uh, be great as well. And it could open the door and, uh, ha and, and then you could find yourself with a tiny bit of a bigger chance. So out of the remaining race, I'd say this is one of the best opportunities uh, for still anyone else if they want to win a race. Perez on the radio. Struggle to see the apexes. So I might need to come up a bit with the seat. So Perez needing to see more in his seat. I'm sure Helmut Marco is already thinking of something to say about that. He usually does these days. Uh, Helmut is here this weekend, by the way. So uh, there'll be an interview on Sky Sports F1 after the session with uh, Christian Horner. Uh, so we'll see what he says there. There's Danny Ricardo, not driving on the pit wall this weekend. Hello, Danny Rick. Uh, he'll be on the F1 Kids broadcasts. Uh, we understand this weekend, which is this weekend being done by F1 TV themselves, not Sky Sports F1. So F1 yeah. TV are running the F1 Kids. It'll be on the Sky Sports F1 red button if you want to see it uh, as well. The kids back in at charge. As uh, they sweep back through, down into the breakers. And this is now down turn four for George Russell. He's on the hard compound tyre. Um, Norris, Ocon, Piastri, Gasly, Bottas and Albon have gone out there on the medium compound tyre. Everybody else out there on the hard tyre. Uh, as I said, they don't want to use too much. This first session, track acclimatisation, more important than ever with the new layout, finding the braking zones, getting the setup right, not doing too many laps because it's a pretty useless session we're in the yeah. daylight here so they've got to sort of just wait for fp2 later but it's gonna be a very busy practice too we've seen this stuff at bahrain and 
Saudi Arabia and all the other night races we've got on the calendar that I can't uh, be bothered to uh, call out. But there's a lot on there, isn't there? So, what is it? Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, two night races. Then we get Singapore, Qatar, Las Vegas and, and yeah. Abu, Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. So six night races on the calendar this year. Six. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, the first session uh, always can be a bit useless, uh, really, uh, in general, really, um, as, uh, as they know they have more time as well. So they chill a tiny bit. Uh, obviously, the track improving all the way as well. They haven't had, uh, obviously, they don't have Formula 2 and Formula 3 uh, this weekend to also wrap the circuit up a tiny bit before FP1 for them as well as, the, as more laps start to come in. And across the line there as well, Russell goes eighth on a 136.964. Carlos Sainz, who is second fastest at the moment, is looking mighty impressive as he comes out the last corner and goes 135.718, uh, which is a total of three tenths fast. Hang on a minute, that time deleted for the stewards. So <laughs> as, as Sainz lost it, because he hasn't updated on our timing tower up here in the commentary box, uh, it's still showing Norris fastest, not Sainz. So, the gap is 135.718, so I'm sure why that's changed, that hasn't changed over on the T-feed uh, as of yet. Watch your footing, there's a frog somewhere around. I think it's gone out the door. And don't worry about the one that's already uh, on the door. That one's ages ago and it hasn't been moved. Uh, but there was, there was a frog running around the commentary box somewhere. Just to let you know. So, Hulkenberg goes up to eight with a 136 as well. Did you need me? All right, uh, let's go quick over the sky for one. And work, but not necessarily for setup work for the next session. So the long, boring days spent driving up and down an airfield are long gone, aren't they, for, for the teams? P1 is for engineers, <laughs> P2 is for drivers, I think. Uh, Jack, what happened with Alpine in Monza? As the team on the it was a it was a pretty dreadful weekend, really, in terms of the results. Um, Obviously, we were saying before, Monza is a one-off in terms of track layout. Have they understood why it was so uh, suboptimal, shall we say? Yeah, exactly. We expected it to be difficult, um, you know, and it ended up being a lot more difficult than initially thought. Uh, however, on top of that, you know, we gained so much valuable data that we can take in, obviously, to the future in 24, but as well as somewhere like Las Vegas, which is going to be very close in similar error levels. Um, so definitely a one-off and a planned one-off. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's very up and down, not only for us, but for Aston as well. You know, we looked one week ago with when we were fighting against Carla Sainz, Pierre passing him on pure pace. Um, and a week later, you know, almost being a lap down. And you have Fernando cruising to an easy P2 in Zambo. And then a, a week later, uh, struggling to be in the top 10. So, um, yeah, it's certain teams at certain tracks are going to be up and down. I think it will be a lot like that for the remainder of the season as well. We go from the heat here in Singapore to the freezing cold in Vegas, though. I mean, the track temperatures are going to be so cold. Exactly, yes. And, and that'll pay, obviously, crucial part into engine performance and also air levels depending on the air pressure so so much can change um, it'll be interesting to see how everything just behaves just speed from back steering and opening up like this oh, I have no traction oh, and no mistake understood Apart from that, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's only doesn't sound like he's having much fun in that car. He's only a tenth off, so once they fix all that, he'll be... Uh... <laughs> yeah, hi George, watching along as well the YouTube chat. Omi, Max sounds like he's in trouble again, but then again, this happens every first practice session. He doesn't oh. seem to like it, does he? Uh, he never seems to like it. The Red Bull always does take uh, its time to just uh, get uh, used to things as well. Um, but yeah, going to be, I think, in FP2, they'll get it all sorted, and if not, maybe in FP3. Uh, but I think this weekend they will definitely be challenged somewhere, or which Stappen will be, maybe by his teammate Sergio uh, Perez. And I'm expecting Perez to be tidying up a tiny bit more uh, to the top once uh, which Stappen steals the championship as well. So huh, let's see how uh, it goes. <laughs> but the team Mercedes currently making their way through as well. Oh. The, the, uh, the Jean-Pierre Lampessi, the. Uh Race engineer from Max Verstappen watching on there with his head in his hands. Not the greatest, as usual. But uh, yeah, weird to have a frog in the commentary box. It's gone, by the way. Huh. We think it's jumped out the door because we left the door open. But uh, it's very unusual to see a frog at all. Uh, in the, well, to be fair, it's not really that bad. But they keep getting the so. 
The Coventry box is now just Kermit the Frog. I'm waiting for Miss Piggy to turn up. But uh, Megan's not in the Coventry box until Sunday. Ooh. I mean that because she does karate a lot. <laughs> she's, uh, she's going to kill yeah. me. She is going to kill me. I'm joking. Thank Megan's you. not. <laughs> Megan's not well at the moment. She's got a bit of a, a, a cold, at the, so uh, she's hopefully going to be with us for qualifying in the race. If not quality, then definitely the race. That's her main focus. I stayed on the main channel for a bit and I couldn't find it, but then remembered to George. Yeah, I did put out a community post and it's on Twitter and everything because uh, we're not there. We're not on the main channel. They're all here on JB Red Sports 2. Uh, that's where we'll be this week. And uh, yeah, basically after this first practice session, we'll, we'll, that's live on JB Red Sports 2 and on Twitch, we'll replay the... Uh, opening session on the main channel so they'll they'll all air there this weekend but delayed and then you'll automatically be redirected to where the live streams are I know it's a mess around this weekend but it's honestly the best we could come up with thanks to Dorna uh, blocking us a week ago always yeah. Really well planned. Yeah. So... Uh, and also, uh, yeah and also thank god you were talking because I was about to say that was a McLaren when Albon was very close to Dorna yeah it's getting me as well I know people. Oh, uh, let's. Oh, no, I don't know. I was just doing. I was talking. Yeah, about. yeah. You already I, heard from me. <laughs> I know so many people who are calling the Williams and McLaren this weekend as well. They've said to me in press briefings as well. Is, is the McLaren going to be fast? Is the Williams going to be fast this weekend? And like, so everybody's falling into that trap again as we cut down towards turn six with Stroll into seven, braking hard, back up in third gear, fourth, fifth. Great down, Hamilton top, 135.571 from Sainz to clear. Uh, Norris, Verstappen, Russell, Ocon, Sonoda. Norris back to the top, a 134.776. So he's still uh, finding the boards. Lance Stroll, however, over the Anderson Bridge now. A little bit close into the breaking zone for turn 13. I want to see the onboard. I know Jess did the lap and I've been looking at it, but I really want to see the live action onboard of this new section of the track coming out onto the opposite side of Raffles Boulevard. Straight down. Let's take a look at it now. So, small curve opens up. Used to be the runoff area, of course. So now it's a race area. Nice in the breaking zone. That should be quite nice coming into the race, I reckon. That sh it should be quite an easy opportunity to overtake. Yeah, a bit of a late uh, send as well would be good uh, there. Maybe you can force a defensive shape, then kind of set the move up uh, and then get closer possibly for a chance into turn one with the DRS as well. That'll be uh, really, really uh, interesting. Uh, and obviously Leclerc got super close last year, didn't he? Uh, before his tyres uh, fell off as well. Yeah. So Leclerc got super close uh, last year in Singapore. So. <laughs> Stoffel van Dorp. Possibly. Watching on. Hello, Stoffel. Yeah. Hello. George, Possibly. go on. Go on. I was going to say, George asking, how are you both doing? I'm not going to answer that, but go on, Amy, how are you? Um, well, had a bit of a late night out yesterday. Oh. <laughs> uh, because after PSL, uh, I couldn't do that yesterday. After that, I just decided, well, I'm just going to go outside and then have a bit of fun in the night. And then come back, uh, sleep about at 2 a.m. and get ready for <laughs> Singapore. <laughs> You've done well to get up in time, then. I, I was moaning about that. I did not feel good at all. Um, well, actually, gosh, I set an alarm for <laughs> 10 a.m. And I actually woke up at 9 by oh, myself. Perfect. So. Oh, OK. <laughs> I mean, I, I am surprised I'm doing the commentary because uh, I did not feel like doing it at all. So um, I, I was honestly considering stepping away for Singapore and letting uh, Meg and Jess and you uh, deal with it as well. And, Stepping away, but I'm here. I'm doing the commentary. I'll still be here. Got the new That's green screen. Yeah. to leave, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, I was calm. Uh, Say again. Josh always refuses to leave, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, to be fair, we've got the green screen set up now. It's right behind us here, actually. If I, if I lift it up, oh, hang on. So I got a break. If I lift it up, you can see the green screen uh, just underneath, and the camera's still set up for it there. So the, 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 the camera's got the green screen features on. And um, we can now swap incredibly easily uh, with everything. So it's going to be a lot of fun uh, getting all that sorted for the green screen stuff later on in the broadcast. 
uh, as well. As we're just taking a quick uh, photo of things as they've gone to an ad break at the moment on uh, Sky Sports F1. And we're trying to get the audio back up and running for you uh, to hear you on the circuit here. And we'll go to the battle screen. Hamilton coming into the pit lane. I love how they're still saying it's round 16 of the championship, despite the fact it is round 15. It, we never raised oh, in Imola, dear. so we, uh, what, I don't know why we count it. Honestly, just give up with trying to name it uh, around name it uh, round 16. You should just go back to round 15. Oh, it's so complicated, but um, it's made it a pain for all of us this year because we're all having to use the extra phase officially as well. Uh, and it's honestly just getting really, really uh, annoying as well. But yeah, we didn't race at Imola. We didn't really do anything at Imola, so don't understand what's the point really I don't think anybody does these days as well it's one of those things where we'll just have to sort of accept uh, that it's going to be confusing until the end of the season and then hopefully it'll uh, get a little bit more entertaining but right now in this practice session for this interesting weekend ahead it is Norris, Leclerc, Perez, Hamilton as well across the boards uh, to keep it through. Magnussen's back in the pit lane. Two Ferraris uh, out on the circuit. As we look at Ocon and Leclerc as well. There's signs back in. I can't quite tell on the TV pictures if he's moved in or not now because it's all changed about. Signs is in the pit lane. Leclerc, Russell, Ocon, Lawson, Alonso, Stroll are out there on the circuit. As you can see on your driver trackers uh, in front of us. What is PSGL? Um, Premier Sim Gaming League. It's the yeah. F1 Esports, where Omi, Jess, and myself commentate. Yeah. And Richie, when he gets it. Don't forget him. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, just, just a bit of fun. If you watch F1 Esports, then I guess PCF1 on, on Wednesdays. <laughs> uh, they, they also have the Esports Live Racing there. But uh, I guess make sure you watch us as well on Thursday. Well, if, you're, if you obviously watch. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to take a screenshot to see if it's possible to do anything with this... Um, F1 pit lane layout for the future. Uh, I, I don't know why they don't. F1 should do watch alongs like we do. I, I don't know why they don't. They get so much. Like, I'm looking at the F1 TV battle screen right now, which is the pit lane monitor. They've got the track and then they've got the onboard cameras. I know they did commentary on it, but if they put the combox cam in one and then a driver track in the other and put that online, it would get millions and millions and millions of views. But then again, free to wear stuff. You may as well just show the, the TV pictures, I suppose, instead of that. All the alternative stuff as uh, it comes down. But Norris from Russell, Leclerc, Ocon at the moment. The top four, Perez, top five as they come through onto it. Let's uh, return over to uh, Sky Sports F1 for the Marina Bay session. 35 minutes to go. And the sun just beginning to set here. Uh, the time is 5 to 6 as well. So it's 17.55 over here in Singapore. 10th drive in the UK. UTC 9.55, of course. Boat's going in. And it does look awesome, this track. Really awesome. And we've uh, 25 minutes in, Omi. No yellow flag, no red flag or anything like it. They've been very well behaved. Yep, they uh, absolutely have. Uh, but just taking the first session easy, no need to take uh, some unnecessary risks, but going to be interesting to see how FP2 goes later on. Um, a bit more of an important session for the teams to learn uh, more data um, as well uh, for qualifying oh, and the race, sorry. so going to be really, really exciting. Let's head down to the pit lane, though, Zach Brown. Clear, Ken. Zach, it's good to talk to you. It looks like the updates are working well for you. Uh, so far, so good, but uh, obviously very early in a dirty track, but uh, Lando's reporting he's uh, happy with what we're trying so far. Um, Zach, hi, it's Bernie. Um, just a quick question. What do you think of the, the revised track layout then? How do you think that's going to shake things up and either overtaking or the tyre degradation? Uh, hopefully it provides a little bit more uh, opportunity for, for passing with another longer straight, but uh, I think we're fine with it either way. I'll hear what the drivers have to say when they get out. Of course, it's Oscar's first time here. How is Oscar getting on, Zach? We obviously know there's a, there's a difference in specification between the two cars, um, but is this a session where it's about, look, 
don't look at lap times, just build yourself in and, and build confidence on a, uh, on the track, getting close to the walls? Yeah, absolutely. It's his first time here, and he's always very, uh, very la relaxed and a great student. So he'll just be taking it all in right now, understanding the track. And then Lando does have the developments this weekend, which will go on Oscar's car next weekend. So they're on two different programs at the moment. Um, Zach, I understand he was a little bit, Oscar was a little bit frustrated after Monza. What conversations have you had? I think he just maybe felt unlucky in the race with the timings and, and Lando coming in first. Yeah, yeah, we didn't execute that uh, very well as a, as a team, but uh, we went karting the following day and had some fun, and he's he's fine. Of course, any uh, racing driver wants to uh, be uh, do their battles on the track, not in not in pit lane, but uh, all, all all fine. And Zach, just looking ahead to next year, obviously you got the updates here. Um, looking ahead to next year, presumably is the 2024 car going to be fully developed in your new wind tunnel now and uh, how, how is that coming along because I believe you you've only recently started working in there haven't you yeah we started in the wind tunnel uh, right after the summer break and the 24 car has already been started so I would say next year is a bit of a hybrid for us and the car was started in uh, the wind tunnel in Germany and it'll be finished up and then ultimately all the upgrades so uh, same thing with some of our other um, CapEx uh, expenditures that we made, new simulator, things of that nature. So 24 will still be a little bit of a transition. 25 will have everything in place. And then, of course, we have some additional uh, people joining us in the new year. Can you tell us anything about that? Any areas you're focusing on with the new staff? Uh, well, we've got, you know, Rob Marshall joining us and yeah. uh, David Sanchez, uh, who most recently was at Ferrari. So they're two very experienced people that will sit alongside uh, Pete Pedromo. Of course, Andre is doing a great job leading the team. And there's uh, about 800 people uh, all, all coming together. So uh, excited to have them join and uh, bring their experience to what's already uh, a team that's working really well together. I just want to ask you one more, Zach. Um, I know when you brought the last big upgrade, um, it appeared, and, and actually there are even some comments that the team were surprised at just how well it worked. Have you fully understood that now? And is this uh, being, helping with the result of this one? Or, or where does the team feel it's at in terms of understanding this car, essentially, for this season? Yeah, we, we you know, as we said at the start of the year, we knew we were going to struggle. So I think we've always had a good sense of uh, the pace of our car, even when it wasn't going to be good. We. We knew that. We weren't surprised by the uh, slow start to the year. Uh, of course, uh, Austria onwards was nice to see our uh, developments work as we thought we would. And uh, we think these are some good upgrades we've just put on the car. So hopefully that uh, will correlate when uh, come qualifying time. Great. Thank you for the moment, Zach. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Zach Brown there on the McLaren pit wall with uh, Lando Norris. Top of the times right now as well uh, with those updates on his car on the medium tyres. Yeah, I tell you what, Gasly's <coughs> been the first of the cars we've seen on the soft tyre and still slower than Lando Norris's time, which was set earlier in the session. So in the uh, McLaren versus Alpine battle that Jack was talking about before, um, it's, uh, it seems to have started well for McLaren. There's a battle. There's a battle. I completely missed that, Omi. Uh, no. Alpine have been on uh, mission self-destruct for the past <laughs> seven races. There hasn't been anything as Ted's in the pits. Every little winglet helps on high downforce circuits like Singapore. And while it's not an upgrade, we're seeing, I think, the return of a little old friend to the Aston Martin, and that's what they call the bow tie. Now, this is a sort of successor. There he is, the little fella. It looks a little bow tie underneath the rain light. Now, it's the sort of spiritual successor to the monkey seat, which was a little winglet that sat atop of the, uh, of the exhaust pipe which is about as big enough to put a small monkey on. But this is uh, the only big enough to put a small caterpillar on, maybe. So uh, there it is. They call it the bow tie. What it does is sort of energize that rear wing diffuser and the rear beam wing just helps the air come out of the rear of the car quicker. Aston Martin had it at Zandvoort, was off the car in Monza, and now I'm very happy to say, because I like it, I think it looks cute, it's back to Singapore. Cheers, Ted. Thank you very much. As Piastri out there on the circuit. Yeah, I think the, the Alpine <laughs> battle, we'll go back to that. Self-destruction, no doubt about it. And I think McLaren have just really got it back in the second half of the season. They've got the new camo livery this weekend, which is basically the side pod changing colour once again. It's been blue, it's been uh, silver, it's been white, now it's black again. Uh, but I think 
Alpine are sort of out of it. They will stay six in the constructors as far as I can tell. Alpine have had so many issues uh, this year in general, and uh, their cars are uh, colliding a, a, a lot of points as well. So at Alpine, it's just really, really chaos. I don't really see any uh, improvements uh, there, and I wouldn't really call it a battle, so <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Uh, as they come down then, Piastri out of the last corner, 134, 776, fastest ever lap times we've seen around this track. It's now 135, 695 for Piastri to go 11th fastest as well on the soft tyres. So Lando still quick up on those mediums, as Karun said earlier on, a 134, 776. He's just come out there on a brand new set of soft tyre compounds, actually. So that should be something to see. Piastri only managing 11th, so the track still not... Uh, gripping up, we've got a yellow flag, however, oh, no. down at sector seven, and that is at turn six and seven, just down Raffles Boulevard. Uh, so I wonder if someone's locked up and gone straight on down the escape road. Can't tell who's there, just, I think it's not Magnuson, is it Russell Sainz Hamilton? It'd be Hamilton, just having a look. No one's stopped on the driver track as far as we can tell, so the yellow flag sector two. And I can't see what it is on the driver tracker. And there's a Ferrari coming back out there. So is Russell. Uh, they're saying it's Carlos Sainz, uh, maybe, <laughs> yeah. who's gone down the escape road or had a spin. The other flag is still out, though. I know, Davey or something, or something yeah. on the circuit? Could be something like that. Still yellow. Sainz is pulling off, getting out of the way of everyone. I'm looking around on the Ferrari to see if there's a problem. I can't see anything. There's the yellow flag, so it's after turn seven into turn eight. There's a yellow flag, so it's not sights. So what's right. what's caused the yellow? The confusing yellow, because we don't know what's it for. And we're staring at sights. There. Oh! Oh, it's a lizard! Ha! <laughs> for the second time in Singapore, there is a lizard. Well, we I just said at the start of the commentary that there was a frog in our commentary box. There is now a lizard on the track. Max Verstappen's going to say it again. She know that. Oh, there's a lizard again on the track. It's smaller on this side. <laughs> OK, I understood. Maybe Godzilla had a kid. Ha! Ha! I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel that nobody oh. expected has happened. Max Verstappen, like he did five years ago, has seen another lizard on the track. Unbelievable in this first practice session in Singapore. It had to be Max again. <laughs> oh, just hilarious. Just hilarious. Oh. There is a lizard on the track. I, I cannot believe it. Where on earth did that come from? That's the second time. It happened five years ago. And now it's happened again. Maybe Godzilla had a kid. Oh. Ha! Absolutely. And this is Carla. Right. Yellow flag is now gone. So the lizard's gone. And this is sighted in turns one, two, and three. Bit wide. Yeah. Rejoining. Oh. <laughs> Can't be up here there as well. But. Yeah, further down. Uh, we thought it was science, first of all. Uh, but no, it was a lizard. But finally, I'm just now. Green flag on screen. That was hilarious. A well. lizard. And, and a bit of a quiet FP1 session. I have never expected to see a lizard. In, I, I, I cannot believe this. Oh. And what's even more funny is the fact is I've just told a friend of mine that. Um, I had a frog in the commentary box earlier, and now we're going to have to say, oh, by the way, there was a lizard <laughs> on the track, an actual lizard. Oh. I, I, I have lo I've lost my marbles now in the commentary box. Science is up, though, in this sector as he comes around. So, OK, another lizard. Science <laughs> found it. What I love is the fact is that Max said, oh, there's another lizard. Yeah, absolutely. Loved that. But yeah, just a tiny bit of traffic for science, a bit more clear for him now, as he now tries to uh, take the lap record. This is just going to be continuous. Uh, people taking lap records now as well, holding on to it for a few seconds, and then someone else will take it, and someone else. Yeah. So it's going to be really, uh, really interesting as well to see. SHT just put on the Twitch chat. Uh, Lizard flashback in 2016. Haha, <laughs> it's happened again. Yep, it's happened again. And we had a frog in the commentary box earlier. 
It's Reptile City. <laughs> it's happened again. <laughs> I'm doing the Alex Jakes, it's happened again thing. <laughs> I, I, I'm honestly not... I, I cannot believe this. I, I'm looking forward to that text message back. Hamilton across the line, 134-155. Lando Norris looking fast at the moment. Sainz has done a 133-944. He's gone uh, fastest overall as he turns in, pulls on the power, and hurtles down into the last corner. What's this time then from Lando Norris? Is he quicker? It's a 133-522. That, that McLaren is four tenths of a second faster than the Ferrari. In practice one alone, Obi. This is a really good start for McLaren, like really strong. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Only practice one though, so gonna be interesting to see what happens later on. But straight, but still a great start. McLaren straight away, uh, really, really uh, on it. So let's see how they're gonna be able to perform uh, this weekend. Can they bring the fight to Red Bull? Can they beat Red Bull? And uh, and as we were talking about earlier, this would be one of their best opportunities to do so as well if they wanted uh, to beat them. As where to watch? I want to watch you guys. Oh. Oh. Uh, PSGL. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just type in PSGL on Easy, YouTube you'll find it. and you'll find it. And then, yeah, then obviously P uh, PCF1 will come on. Uh, yeah. But I guess I guess places for you to go is PSF1 on Monday. Uh, That's Jess. Then PCF2 on Thursday. That's Richie and, PC... and me, but I'm not there this season. I'm taking a break. Yeah. Then PCF3. Which is you! <laughs> You've got the you've had the most promotions in one year. F six, F five, F four, F three. Well, last season what I did was I did F seven, then I did also F six at times, and I did F four on the yeah. PlayStation side. Then I came over here, then I did F five, and now I'm also doing uh, F three as well. <laughs> to be fair, I need I'm looking forward to getting back into the swing of it, but what would help me the most if, if they've enabled crossplay to the broadcasters so that we could because then it, it saves so much time. If that was possible, I would do it. I'd, I'd come back immediately. Because it means I could also do the streaming as well alongside Richie. So, yeah. Yeah. Was that really, really interesting. But let's just uh, hope. But crossplay obviously is a tiny bit uh, buggy, and they probably want to keep it separate as well to avoid uh, some of the issues. So, for now, it looks like we're just keeping it PC uh, and uh, PS well. Um, I guess some PlayStation commentators uh, can get involved if the streamer actually has good connection because they can screen yeah. share uh, the OBS and I guess whoever um, whoever from PlayStation is doing it. Well, and I guess just come on. Yeah, the beauty is what we've got here is that I can just share the screen to Rich the exactly the same way we do right now with uh, the TV pictures. Because that's how we do the yeah. commentary on the Discord is that we can always see the TV pictures. And we're working on a way to get a comp cam on me and Megan up here. But it's incredibly difficult. So uh, mm. we are looking for a way to get a com cam set up so that they can see us. Because at yeah. the moment, they can only see us on the YouTube chat uh, or the Twitch, whichever yeah. one we want. Ocon. I was actually really up. Go on. Oh, sorry. Ocon just went up to seventh, now eighth, because Verstappen's done a 133.476 and gone second fastest. Uh, Leclerc has gone top, 133.350. Uh, as 20 minutes to go in the session. Go on, Amy. Yeah. I was just a tiny bit upset there yes, uh, yesterday, though, that I couldn't uh, do PSDL <laughs> as well. But uh, w once I saw it, I waited about till about, I'd say, 8 to just in case if Jess needed me anywhere else, so if anyone yeah. turned down. But then I uh, went off outside and, uh, as I mentioned earlier, just uh, chilled outside for a bit all the way till about 12 to 1, and then came back and uh, got some sleep before this, so. <laughs> uh, was a bit, was a bit fun yesterday, but was a tiny bit at the same time upset because I wanted to do, I, I really wanted to do Mexico. For some reason, I really just like uh, Mexico to be honest. Lap one, especially, I really love the lap one at Mexico. Always interesting with the long uh, run towards the first corner. That first corner run is the best on the calendar. Some amazing uh, positions down there as uh, they come into it. I remember I loved Sochi's point twenty one as well. That was a brilliant opening up. Sochi. Well. Yeah, such 2021, yeah, the opening yeah. up there. That's brilliant. 
I'll tell you what, the one thing about that track, it was boring in real life, but it was amazing on the game. Always yeah. gave us great racing. And I wish, I so wish that we could have Malaysia back in both esports oh. and gaming. I love Malaysia so much. Malaysia if they could just put in classic tracks, if they could just put in classic tracks, then PSGL and leagues would definitely use it. Because yeah. they still use Portugal, France and stuff. All EA got to do is just add it to the game and it'll be used. Yeah, <laughs> we would use Malaysia. Yeah, we absolutely would. There's no reason uh, to why not. Uh, I'm excited to see, though, what tracks are going to be announced for the final two rounds uh, in PSGL as well. Uh, to see. Because we still have two more rounds left, but we don't actually know which rounds they are. So going to be really, really exciting uh, for me to see uh, yeah. as well. Weird how they've, they've done this year's calendar, to be fair. Was, uh... I think I think half of it was announced. Um, yeah. And then the other half was announced. And then there were still two more rounds, which still need to be announced. <laughs> uh, and I've been looking at the PSGL chat. Everyone been, everyone's been getting in their predictions that they could be this, they could be that. <laughs> <laughs> Did we not race here in 21 or 22? So we did race here in 2020 or 2021 in Singapore. For, for, in, yeah, in real yeah. life, we uh, yeah. didn't in 2020 and 2021. Then obviously we turned here last year as well. Cracking race it was last year. We, we, we obviously had the one hour procedure delay as well. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was at, fun. Uh, the beginning. That was fun having to, to talk about nothing. And we could be in for that again because the, the rain is uh, predicted <laughs> for Saturday and Sunday. So. That could be a lot of fun. Well, Josh, well, Josh, at least you've got more wafflers on the team than to help you now. That is true, and I would personally love it if it got delayed by a couple of hours, because that means we might get our live streams back on the main YouTube channel. <laughs> Which is, if that's the case, <laughs> we are. If that's the case, we're jumping straight over. Yeah, all I've got to do is click a button, and we're on. Yeah, we definitely we'll, would definitely be a tiny bit uh, fun. Uh, would that? Uh, I've got one hub later actually on that night uh, on the Singapore race day as well. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be good as well. It's actually Las Vegas, I think. <laughs> oh, is it Vegas? I need to sprint as well. Oh! Sprint to Vegas. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, drama is gonna uh, take place. Let's just hope there's not too much, but <laughs> I don't know what is gonna happen that race. I'd like PSGL to do a couple of sprints, to be fair. I don't think. Well. I think uh, Connor doesn't really like sprints, I think that's why they don't do it, but I think WR do. Yeah. Uh, and I think One Hub do as well. Uh, I don't really think PSG will most likely ever do one, to be honest. As well. It would be fun. It would definitely be a tiny bit fun to see a bit of a sprint. It, it may be in the non championship events. <laughs> well, are we doing any non championship right now? Uh, not yeah. just yet, no. I'm going to be sweating. I'm going to be sweating Vegas over the next few days. <laughs> Jess is having to do the lap attacks for Qatar and Vegas uh, for us, which he's very kindly agreed to. But yes, it's not going to be fun. So we apologise, yeah. Jess, that you're going to have to go through that. Well, I'm excited to see how Jess actually does in the one hub race as well yeah. in Vegas. That's I'll true, probably be it? watching about half of it before before I go and do the P2 to Hamilton over the line P4 right now. But uh, we, we always do have one session together, don't we, alone, just in a weekend. Yeah, it's always We one. always do. Although yeah. Josh T has just disappeared off the face of the earth. He wasn't he wasn't in the commentary box for IndyCar on Sunday. And he hasn't been on the Discord. He hasn't texted any of us. So yeah. we, we've got no idea where he's gone. I have. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. <laughs> Says Jess for Vegas. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was laughing oh, at that. Oh, two seconds. Four others. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> Russell's not happy. Who is that? Is that? Oh, it's Perez. Uh, oh dear. Uh. I wouldn't say anything, George. You might get called out of the media. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, Jess, I haven't commentated over it. So for me, there is still some kind of thing that. It could be that I don't know. It, it's basically stepping to the unknown. So for me, I still I'm not I'm not really gonna be uh, crying about it. I, I, I guess I I guess I'm just gonna go into it and see what happens. But Mike said it's absolutely terrible to me. So I guess my I'm still really excited for it, but I don't know how it's gonna go. So that's why I'm that's why I'm a tiny bit excited for it. So. I'll tell you one thing though that I'm a bit annoyed about is the fact that Max Verstappen can use derogatory terms against both Hamilton, Stroll, and other other people. And he is just sort of, it's, it's commented on but then brushed away. Helmut Marko does it, 
and it's World War Three. And I think we need to hold the same accountability that we do to Alan yeah. Marco to Max Verstappen as well. And it's just and to everybody really. It's not on. It yeah. is not on at all. So yeah. Yep. Cross line unnecessary. Well, yeah, unnecessary comments. It really just uh, is. But yeah, all of them coming over the line. Here's his, here is Charles Leclerc oh, yeah, as well. Sector eight. Now that's where. Now sector seven was where the lizard was. So is Sector 8, has he come back? Have we got a second Godzilla? <laughs> Yellow Sector 2. Have we? Uh, Have we got another one? Well, there's no one there on the track, I like to tell you. So this yellow must be for a lizard. Has to be, because <laughs> Magnuson's going through OK, and no one else is there in that sector. So I reckon the yellow flag, it's in the same part, Sector 8. I reckon the lizard's back. Oh, it's arrived. It's back! Green it's flag. happened again. Uh, we need to see fast, but... Uh, what's happened? Why don't we go on circuit right now, please? <laughs> oh, it's gone. Oh, the yellows are gone. Yeah, back oh. to green. Now, was it... Uh, it is the lizard! Lizard Yay. again! Second lizard! What is going on? <laughs> the lizard is back. How Second is lizard. Science radio. Right. Another lizard really deep turn back. Copy it. Reporting. <laughs> I love how they've put the slippery surface flag out as well. But what flag do you put out for lizard? That's the question. And it's I'm still there. Phone, but look I'm it, not look. replying. I can still <laughs> see the tail. I can still yeah. see the lizard's tail. It's just in between the MSC <laughs> boardings. Has it gone yet? Wow. Lizards uh, F2 today. Yeah. I'm getting one of those scampels. Oh, <laughs> I got one of those. Yeah. Singapore. Singapore. Let me let me enjoy a bit of FP1 without me getting called now. That's <laughs> funny. My phone rang during the first lizard attack, and your phone oh. rang around the second. <laughs> uh, what's that one flash on my timing screen? Leclerc still looking good. Is our description of this session going to be another weird session or something? Aquatic, maybe. Mm, yeah. Uh, reptilian, maybe, because I had a frog in the commentary box, and then there's a lizard. There's two lizards on the track. I think it's the same lizard as well. It's honestly been a hilarious first practice, though. How on <laughs> earth has a has a lizard got onto the track? I, I can't. I, 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 don't, I didn't understand it in 2016. I don't understand it now. Ted. Could be Loretta. Well, then Larry also covers Loretta. Not really. Almost. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what they should do is uh, is follow the organisers at the Il Notre Dame in Canada, of course, where they set humane traps for the uh, for the wildlife. They bait the traps with lots of things that lizards likes to eat, uh, and then they deposit the lizards once they've gone into these humane traps on some other part of Singapore, or keep them in uh, keep them in a little lizard holiday camp until I feel they like finish. The notebook special. Well, well that's what they do to deter the groundhogs. Are you, I feel like you're going to go on a, a lizard hunt later, Ted. It's got you written all over it. Good, uh, good subject for the F1 show, Rachel. I'll, I'll yeah. do it for you later. Um, what awesome. I did want to tell you about was uh, was Haas F1, uh, who Lee, Nico Alkenberg has just left the garage. They don't have any upgrades on the car. What they do have, hopefully you can see down here, is a brand new central console uh, in the garage. Now, those of you who watch Formula One uh, very often oh, yes. We've got um, it. We've got will it. notice that uh, a lot of teams have the central console. I think McLaren probably the first ones to come up with it. Mercedes have it, Ferrari have it, Red Bull don't have it, really. There's just one little central console pretty much for Paul Monaghan in the middle of the garage. But uh, now Haas used to have their engineers on the side of the garage, which funnily enough is, is where uh, Red Bull have theirs. But they've now decided to put Gary Gannon and Mark Slade and their support engineers in the middle of the garage, like the majority of the F1 team. So that is new for this weekend. Do they still have the smallest pit wall? Yes, the pit wall is still only three people. Uh, Pete Crawler, the, uh, the team manager, uh, Gunter Steiner and Ayo Komatsu, which is, uh, I think you can see it now. It seems to get smaller every week I, I look at it. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. it is, it isn't it? It seems to get even smaller. Maybe just gunter has been on a diet, I'm not quite sure. But uh, <laughs> when you compare it to Alpha Tauri next door, which now, which had seven seats and now has eight, uh, because wow. it has to keep uh, Daniel Ricciardo on there as well, uh, you can really see the difference in how many people each team think is important to have on the pit wall. Great, thank you, Ted. Cheers, Ted. On board with Alexander Albon over the Anderson Bridge into turn 13. And this first practice session has been one of the strangest. And yet Singapore always does deliver uh, one of the strangest. Question, when do you see 
Uh, oh, what's this question? When do you... I can't see it because of the... Uh, ah, question. When do you start doing this, Joshua and Obi, when you join? I started doing... Oh, uh, right, oh wow. Uh, oh, wow. This is a complicated one. Okay, I, I started commentating on Formula One in 2004. So, yeah, long time ago. I then started doing uh, YouTube in 2019 after doing three, uh, two seasons on Facebook in 17 and 18. So they had a Facebook page, 17, 18, then just went to YouTube because it was easier. And um, that's been that ever since. And then now on Twitch as well. And so, yeah. But uh, in terms of streaming, we started that in 2020. Every session, we used to do like little report videos, but in terms of these commentaries, recording them, we used to do for years. And then in terms of this, the, the, the actual streaming of them all and everything, that began in 2020. And then our first full season was 21. Amy joined at the start of this year though. Uh, when did I start? Uh, well, obviously I watched, I started watching it in 2017. Uh, then about, I'd say in 2020, I actually started commentating yeah. on uh, F1, F2 and F3. That, uh, those are the ones I actually started commentating. I uh, did have a few rounds off though, but once I was sick, well, I just decided to uh, watch uh, it. I think, uh, and then and then I guess I continued doing that. Then for this year, I had a plan to record them. I had a plan to record all of the F1s, F2s and F3s. And so I guess kind of just updating it. But yeah. then, the, <laughs> so I did that for Bahrain, I recorded them. Uh, and then, well, I made my way uh, here then instead. Jess, uh, but it was Jess. The ones I, yeah. But the ones I still actually have recorded, I still actually have the F2s. Some, uh, some of the ones which I was, wasn't here for, uh, when we didn't have the pit lane thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I have the Saudi Arabia feature race that I also recorded. Uh, and uh, the Australia feature, because uh, I think I was with you guys uh, for the yeah. Australia sprint. You and are, then I yeah. think Saudi sprint as well. And uh, Baku sprint, I think, me, Jess, and Josh decided to watch it in the VC call. And then Baku feature race was, my, it was actually my last one, uh, doing it outside of here. So, and, and then obviously I made my way here. So here I am. Jess has just said what I was going to say. Uh, Omi found you from me, <laughs> she said. And yeah, that's true, yeah. Uh, you, Jess brought you in back in uh, Saudi Arabia. So, yeah. so technically, you joined at the same time as Bernie Collins joined the Sky F1 team. So you're fine. Uh, yeah. I guess a very, very long uh, talk, though. Uh, uh, a very, very long, uh, well, not too long, but I guess my thing, my times have been very complicated. I started doing, well, I'd say eSports properly. Yeah. Not really proper eSports. I, did, I started doing Roblox for about 2020. I started doing that uh, that kind of commentary for 2020. Oh, I started yeah. commenting in general in 2019. So. Oh, my God. Yeah, been I've just realised something. What? Well, a friend of mine yesterday uh, sent me a text message saying it was three years ago since we did a long bike ride around Grimsby during the lockdown. So it was just everything getting eased up, so we were allowed to go see one person. And that means it was three years ago yesterday that I started commentating esports. So it was three years ago yesterday. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay. That's uh, interesting. That's uh, supposed to three years, wow. Okay. That means my computer here, I'm looking at the commentary box, is three years old. Adam says, Hi, Josh and Amy, have a fantastic day and a wonderful weekend. Enjoy Singapore. Thank you, Adam. Hopefully, you have a great weekend too, my friend. George yep, says, Adam. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for. Uh, we got a lizard again. Oh. We have another lizard. Hey. Se track surface is slippery, sector eight. The yellow's back out. So. The, the lizards return for the third time. Back to the lizard three as well. So let's take a look at it. Well, actually, this is the fourth, isn't it? So four lizard appearances now in Singapore. Three in one session. Yes. So can we have a look at it? I know, we're, I, know, I know we were here to see racing cars, but everybody, <laughs> I think everybody would agree with me watching would rather see the lizard. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Come on, take us to the camera. Uh, Come on. The lizard's probably eating the cameraman, so that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that. <laughs> Cut to the lizard. And it's Liz, Liz Cam as well as it comes through. 
Come on, can we see it? Well, we're going to see it. We're going to see it anyway because we're coming onto yeah. that part of the track anyway with George Russell. The yellow flag is still out. As is this. Oh no, it's gone green now. Oh. Who's directing this? Show us the lizards. We don't want to. We don't want to see. We've already seen this, and we're going to see quite there a bit is. more. Oh, there it is. Yellow's back out again. There's the lizard again. Whoa. Uh, lizard, this How did you know? I was one. going to say. I mean, that's good. Good recognition. It, it is. It's a different lizard. This cards, be careful. <laughs> oh, so th that's three lizards. So I think I've got like a lizard enclosure down there at turn eight or something like that because there's so many down uh, there now. Yeah, there absolutely could be. <laughs> That'd uh, be maybe fun. they just start a. Well, well, if Verstappen's dominating, how about we just block the circuit with them? How about they all just come on, block the circuit, <laughs> cause a bit of a red flag? I was That'd just thinking that. <laughs> that would be the strangest red flag. Lizard invasion, turn eight. <laughs> red flag race stops. <laughs> We've had ground togs, and now we've got lizards. So we've had weird stuff, but that would definitely be somewhere up there. <laughs> is it still there? Yellow flag is still out going to my screen. Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. Lizard's gone. Well, it lasted a tiny bit uh, long, but yeah, no worries, Josh. Uh, not, not Josh. Uh, I was talking to George <laughs> uh, for the complicated questions. I actually like it. I, I like actually answering uh, questions as well sometimes. <laughs> Really, really uh, fun. Uh, and, and, and also, I think he was the one who asked about uh, what was the question you asked last time. I can't even remember. <laughs> that was still meant to. That I actually still owe him an answer for as well. <laughs> um, all three yellow flags in this session have been for lizards. Just to let you know. Yeah. SHG all says. Drivers are. Yeah, they're all driving a bit clean, but it's only lizards. Oh, uh, look at that setting sun shot. That's great. Oh, I love it. Sound. And Alfa Romeo and Ferrari making their way through it, so this is just incredible. I've really enjoyed this session. Really have enjoyed it. Uh, Man Lizard Episode 3 is my home track cursed with lizards this year. Yeah, SHT, how many lizards do you usually get in Singapore? Let, let, tell us, how, is, it a, is it a normal thing to, to see all these? Because that's three. Love to know. Is lizards like the natural habitat for them or something. It's very warm and humid, of course. It's nice. Uh, oh, I've never seen... We had one! One lizard back in 2016 or 17, whatever it was. And now we have three this year alone. Really strange. <laughs> Plus, I wouldn't like to be the marshals. for standing there and all of a sudden a lizard comes between your legs through the little porthole thing that they've got there. Oh. Martin Brundle's out on his track port later. I think he might be going with a safari hat or something or other. So, Lando right. comes back nice through. Instagram profile of the Singapore weekend time. <laughs> yes, of course, Obi's birthday on Sunday, so get your birthday comment in for Sunday. Hopefully it's going to be worse. Yellow again! Oh. It's right. back! And the checkered flag's out as well. The checkered flag is out, and so is the lizard. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There's, there it is. So where is it now? So there's a slippery... There it is, on the circuit! Oh! oh. I thought no one was going to uh, run over right there. I think somebody has. Oh. Right. Hulkenberg's taking the flag. Lando avoided it. Four lizard appearances in FP1. Unbelievable. Yeah, four lizards. And it has brought out the yellow flag in Sector 8. Yeah. Absolutely just really, really... Uh, oh, well, I just had another weird one, but it's just been so. It's really been a funny one, a hilarious one, I have to say. <laughs> Lizzie! I mean, we need to think of a song now, don't we, for it as well? It's like Attack of the Alligators in that episode of Thunderbirds as well. I bet there's actually going to be a fun one, because then I have one hub later that night, I think, <laughs> if it goes well. <laughs> I'm hoping that I enjoy it, but I don't know. If there's constant crashes everywhere. Uh, but one thing I do want at Vegas is 3 wide, which I think we'll surely get on that yeah. on the Vegas tip on that, so that'll be exciting. I want F I want Coke Masters to add lizards. I do. Add, add That's the lizards. weirdest suggestion I've ever heard. I want lizards on the Singapore chat, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> add in wildlife, add groundhogs yeah. to Canada. <laughs> add billionaires to Las Vegas. Uh, Everyone you uh, hit is for five pounds, is it brother? Basically, just turn F1 into Grand Theft Auto. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> uh, 
Actually, you know what you've done? I've got the total got some F1 games, haven't they? On there, they can drive the F1 cars. 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Give me a commentary box that I can walk in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're speaking of that. Hello. Uh, Are you bringing me biscuits? Hello. So how many biscuits? Megan? No, it's, it's David. One biscuit. Uh, Two biscuits. Three biscuits. Yummy. And oh, oh, good idea. Tin of roses. But look at this. Three Jenny Gao, if you're watching. I know you do, Jenny. Uh, three full packets of bourbons. Very nice. And I know what he's thinking, David. We should we put some of them away for Christmas? And my answer to that is, no. They'll all be gone <laughs> by the end of the weekend. Thank you. Three you full all. things of bourbons. Look at that. <laughs> and they're the best kind as well, because Morrison's ones don't have any sugar on them. Whereas Tesco, if you're in the UK, they have sugar on them, which when you dump them in your tea and all your cocoa, uh, it turns it a bit funny. But these don't have any sugar on them. So they're the pure biscuit, and they're very tasty too. So there's your biscuit report. So three, three full things. We're That's bringing right. a lot of different reports, aren't we now? Well, hang on, it's around about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, It's around about a hundred biscuits in my hands right now, or bourbons. I need a tin. Now it's a bad idea. They'll just all get eaten. I'll just sit there like that all that all night. I can go through half a pack of those right now as well. It's, it's, it, it, it's not cigarettes with me, it's bourbons. I'll just go through half a pack. Fantastic. Right, cars on the track, they're doing their practice starts. This yep. is Carlos Sainz having a quick look at the halo. He's second. Look at the eyes, Omi, completely focused. <laughs> Great stuff, in Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, SHT saying, four lizard appearances in FP1. Unbelievable, I won't be surprised if there's more lizards appearances in fp3 let's see if we can beat four let's see if we can get to five <laughs> tomorrow in fp3 uh, as uh, well uh, and uh, george saying my complicated question last time was the worst time to commentate oh yeah oh. i remember that one actually well i'll answer that for you in fp2 then but here's the results john first practice then goes to charles leclerc and a ferrari one two with carlos Sainz in second max Verstappen goes third with lando norris in fourth lewis hamilton fifth and george russell in sixth positions, the three Brits in a row. Sergio Perez is seventh with Alex, uh, with Fernando Alonso, sorry, in eighth. Higgins in third, ninth, and Esteban Ocon rounds out the top ten. Stroll is eleventh. Then that's followed by Gasly in twelfth. Alexander Albon thirteenth. Ratu Bottas is fourteenth. Kevin Magnussen fifteenth. Liam Lawson sixteenth. Nico Hulkenberg seventeenth. Joe Granue is eighteenth. Oscar Piastri nineteenth, and Logan Sargent is in 20th position. Not a bad race then for the first practice session of the Singapore Grand Prix. Omi, what's been your thoughts on it? Uh, well, I've enjoyed the lizards mostly. Other than that, it's been cars driving around uh, the new layout, so I really enjoy that as well. We're in for a brilliant rest of the weekend. Practice 2 is live on JB Motorsports 2 and Twitch at 1.45pm and then straight after it will be uploaded to the main YouTube channel and premiered like Practice 1 has been. Practice 3 tomorrow 10.15am live again JB Motorsports 2 and Twitch qualifying 1.45pm live both streamed after. Race live, uh, lights out at 1pm, 1 air at 12pm JB Motorsports 2 and on Twitch, and then the full race will be replayed right after. My thanks to Romy for the first session. My thanks to all of you at home as well. We'll be back now on JB Motorsports 2 for the second practice session on, on, on Twitch as well. It's a difficult weekend, but for Lizards, Max Verstappen, not on the pace. Ferrari 1-2 at Singapore. Thanks for your company. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.